G'day, everyone. Welcome to the Big Footy Eagles podcast for another week. We're back. It's round one. It's in the books. The West Coast Eagles, unfortunately, went down to the Gold Coast Suns. But we're here. We're going to chat about it. We want to hear your opinions as well. So jump in the comments. Have your say. A few tech issues for myself, Honey Badger 35 We've got Miguel Sanchez here, and we've got Keys as well. So let us know if there's any weird tech bullshits happening. But uh, beyond that, let's talk about some football. That's what we're here to do, and we will get stuck right into it right now. West Coast Eagles, 12 goals, 880, were defeated by the Gold Coast Suns in round one. 16 goals, 11, 107 for the Suns. Their first win against the Eagles in Perth. Uh, Miguel, you know, in as many words, what did you take from the game? Probably a bit better than I expected. I don't know if you're going to do the three-word reviews, but mine was better than expected. Um, sort of went in really pessimistic, thinking we'd get blown away with uh, with the players we had on the park, but yeah. um, put up a good a good showing for three and a half quarters, really, and then sort of just let the, uh, the rope go at the end and um, gave up four goals. So it was one thing to lose, but sort of took a bit of a percentage hit as well, I, I suppose, and... Uh, we can talk about whether that was due to um, the team not being fit enough or whether the fact that we we went in overly tall because we, we pretty much had to, whether that affected us. But, yeah, those last four goals hurt. But um, some of the numbers as well weren't great. But given who we had out, uh, I, I think most of us didn't really expect us to win. So probably um, it was good to just see a, a bit of fight even if it, it didn't last the full game. Yeah, I wasn't expecting much pre-game. At three-quarter time, we were up, but I was still expecting to get run over. It's still very disappointing to lose. Uh, I'll do a few three-word reviews, and then, Keys, I'll get your take on the game. Uh, Burjo on Twitter says, stick the tackle. It's definitely something we'll come around to later on. Phil says, green shoots arrive. Learn to mark, says Jeeves. Alex loved the effort. Anthony liked that we went back to basics. O'Neill Foley Hoff, says Baldy. Plenty of positives, says Huey. And Keys, yourself, you've said here too many missing. What did you like from the effort? And ultimately, you know, the Eagles do just fall a little bit short. Yeah, well, I, I suppose in a proper sliding doors moment, not like the convoluted made-up ones that Purple Barrett makes up. Um, if Tim Kelly didn't get COVID, mm. we win that match and we have four points. I think... Um, and then if you maybe add a sprinkling of two or three others in there, um, we definitely win. But I think um, when we did the review last week, I mean, we all pointed to the midfield and said, well, that's where it's going to be won and lost. And we were a bit skinny through there. And I think whilst um, the guys that went in there sort of battled pretty manfully, eventually sort of weighted numbers, particularly from Raul and Miller. Yeah. So Miller, yeah. Um, but I think if we had, I think Kelly would have made enough of a difference in the middle to change the result because it would have given us um, what we what we didn't have a lot of was a genuine attacking midfielder um, that could do some damage uh, that that perhaps would have forced Gold Coast to worry about what was happening when the ball was going around the other way. Um, I, I think they they were able to spread and run forward of the contest without really having to concern themselves too much about what was getting done the other way. Mm. Um, I think Kelly might have most likely would have changed that balance um, a bit and given us enough drive to maybe, you know, get enough ball in there to, to change the swings and the inside 50 count. Finishing off some pretty, otherwise a pretty even game. It was. And uh, look, yeah, I'll do some more three-word reviews here, but let's talk about how even that was. Uh, first quarter is the benchmark, says Merkin on, on uh, Facebook. Nice name there, my friend. Uh, can't question effort. Surprise the doubters. Potential, but disappointing. Better than expected, work in progress, good solid effort. There's a there's a theme here, Migs. It's that, look, maybe some of us didn't expect too much coming in, uh, especially given the, the personnel that we had available to us. The first quarter is now the benchmark. The Eagles found a way to manufacture a bit of a midfield. Jermaine Jones will talk about 
Opening centre bounce of the season, who's in there? Willie Rioli. You know, we, we manufactured some ways to speed up the game and a little bit more playing on, a few more runners from behind, things like that. It is hard to think that you throw that little bit extra quality in there and we probably could have scalped that game. Yeah, as Key said, yeah, just chuck a Kelly in there, maybe chuck a, a Ryan for some finishing uh, in the forward line. Um, <laughs> just reading some of the comments coming through. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly would have played if we took COVID a little more seriously. Yeah, well, we've we're got, not some, doing oh, here, got some got some heckling, by the way. Yeah. Apparently, we wear the same clothes on the pod every week. Now, this is not true. I just own a lot of blue shirts. I changed and you're, my shirt. Fuck off, okay. Keys <laughs> mate. Keys has changed his shirt. An Eagles jumper is an Eagles jumper. Yeah. I'm not going to do Katy Perry four costume changes in a show, but sorry, Migs, I think you were talking about the football before we were interrupted. Yeah, before we start making this a fashion show because I'm really not equipped for a fashion show. Um, yeah, I, I, um, midfield, you could see we were undermanned and, um, yeah, you couldn't question the effort in there, but, um, yeah, just... Wits seemed to get on top of Nat Nui, which was a bit of a surprise, and and we really needed um, uh, we really needed Nat Nui to uh, to get on top of uh, Wits to to get the ball going because we couldn't really rely as well as Redden played and uh, Rioli and Jones added something when they were in there, but we really needed um, to get that first use from Nat Nui, which we didn't get particularly in, in the first half. Um, some of the numbers, the contested possessions, um, what are we minus thirty four? Tackles, we only laid 38 for the game. I mean, it's the sort of numbers that we were seeing last year, but I don't know. They might lie a bit because the effort seemed to be up. So whether it's whoever commented on the broken tackles, obviously they don't get counted. Um, Can I just say, I, I noticed this in that Frio preseason game as well because I thought the intensity was up and the tackling was up. And then they flashed the numbers and it was nearly three-quarter time we'd laid about 20. And I thought, yeah. I'm not sure how that... But by the same token, apparently that pressure gauge that they make up, which is bullshit, but apparently we were through yeah. the roof on that. So, I don't know. The eye test for me is is the factor there. But anyway. I did hear yeah. on one of the radio programs today, um, someone made, made comment that the tackle numbers across the league were down for round one. So, I don't quite know whether they've changed what they count as a tackle or not, but that was a, and I don't even know if it's true, but that was a comment that I heard someone say that um, across the board, across all games, tackle counts were lower than average. Felt like loads of tackles early, but faded out as fatigue kicked in after half time. says Matt. Uh, potentially Matt, and definitely I think we were a bit worried about the boys running out of steam Towards the end of the second quarter, they looked like it. And, of course, Gold Coast really avalanched at the end and, and ran away with a comfortable victory. Uh, yeah, it's it's a tough one to take. And you've got to only – we can only get carried by the personnel we have. But, Keys, let's talk about some of the new boys or guys playing new roles for the first time. Jermaine Jones got a lot of time on the ball. He was the big standout for me. Uh, Sam Petrescu-Seaton ran through the middle a fair bit. Apparently, he picked up a bit of a knock as well, but very good early and faded in and out after that. Willie was fantastic. We can dedicate a whole pod to Willie, I'm sure. And we certainly have in the past. I'm sure we will again. Uh, Kim says, love the Willie hit. Heard Adam Simpson say on Channel uh, on Channel 7 that they're going to challenge. We'll definitely come back to that later on. But, Keys, a new look midfield, sort of a cobbled together midfield. But Jones, great. SPS showed some signs. And Willie on the ball, love that. Yeah, I think ultimately I really like Jones' game. Mm. Um, and I think... He made a couple of blues, and there's a couple of times he sort of got caught, you know, trying to run and carry and ran himself into a bit of a dead end. But what I really liked, he, he was the one midfielder we had that really tried to attack the game. And and I thought whenever we got whenever we got his hands on the ball through the midfield, we looked dangerous. It looked like something might happen. Um, and it sort of opened, opened them up. The other guys, and I think it was something across the board, and I think there's the problem when you you have you have too many really good players. Here. We've got a lot of, like, O'Neill did some nice things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even, you know, Patricia Seaton did some nice things. Rioli did some nice things. Petch did some nice things. Um, you know, we had a lot of players that on occasion did some nice things, but ultimately... Um, they didn't do them often or consistently enough um, 
you know, to get the to get the win. And I think that's where there's some signs there, but that's that's what the guys have got to have to do. They just they've, they've got to do those things more regularly. Um, you know, I think O'Neill had the ball. I think something like 15 or 16 times from from memory. Mm-hmm. Um, if he can get that up to, you know, 20 nudging 25, then he only had um, 60% game time though. Yeah, yeah thir- was, 13 and a goal. Yeah, yep. so you know he gets that up sort of low twenties, um, and then you know that's a little bit of a difference. And the same with Petrescu, Seaton, and and if if Jones can sort of elevate himself from twenty one to twenty five or twenty six, um, then we've got something to work with, and maybe that'll that'll come. Um, but yeah, really, really like Jones. I think. Um, Hoff showed some signs as well. Yep. Um, I think a couple of times he sort of got a bit overawed and got caught out with the pace of the game a touch. But he didn't it didn't drop his head. He kept on presenting and and trying. I think, you know, he'll be one guy that I think what most of us thought would probably hold him back from getting the AFL debut earlier than or well, late as early as he did. Um, he needs to put a bit of size on, looks a little bit skinny. Um, and that that told on him a couple of times where he sort of got out muscled or pushed, or, but you know he he looks like there's there's something there. So yeah, there's there's signs, um, and I think ultimately that's what we're going to be looking for this season. We're just going to be mm. looking for little nuggets of positivity throughout games because um, I think the overwhelming thing is we're we're in for a for a disappointing season. I mean, we're <laughs> unless these guys that come back come back pretty soon and come back really really firing from day one, uh, you know, finals on that showing is going to be out of the question. I mean, you've got to fact as much as it was a you know a brave effort and things like that. I mean, it was Gold Coast and. From what they showed, I mean, they're a they're probably a bottom six side. So, yeah, not to be sour grapes, but I'd be a bit concerned. It took a long time to break a really average forward line was okay, back line was okay on paper, but that midfield and getting that effort from Miller, from Rao, um, Ellis popped up a little bit. They had a fair bit on the go. I don't think they're going to be able to push everybody else around did, quite like it, that. It's not like they've got. I mean. Obviously, King out is a big loss for them, but I'm they're sad. not going to get him back this year. And I think, apart from King, I, I think Jack Bowes mm. was perhaps the only, money, the only other best. I, I don't know their side well enough, but I don't think there's too many others that that are going to come back this year. They're going to help them become even a, a stronger side. So what what was out in that park is is about what they've got to deal with for the rest of the year. So, um. Good you know, I think that's before we, you know, if we were playing a, a better side, um, we probably would have been split open a hell of a lot earlier and we might not be quite quite as buoyed as, as what we, we've been because we might have been staring down a seven or eight goal loss um, instead of one. And I think, I think four goals is a fairly generous assessment of the margin. I don't think it was a four goal game. I mean what five or six minutes to go, we were still only three or four points behind. It was, and it's mm. um they got their last two I mean the one well the last goal was after siren. Um and the last two were sort of in the last couple of minutes. So yeah. Um I, I think we I, I think the the goal that put them ten points up or whatever it was nine or ten points up, I think that broke us I think that was the one where the guys go oh, saw shit. We we um we fought for as long as we can. We've got nothing left to give, and I think that's they got they got some you know they got some pretty easy looks after that. And um yeah, I don't know that twenty seven points is a is a true indication of how close the game was. Nah, agree with that. Um, Migs, obviously we're taking it from the Gold Coast game, and we'll sort of apply it as we go forward. Maybe a better side would have carved us open, yes. 
But our fixture for the first month of the season, we touched on it in the run-in. Gold Coast, North Melbourne, Freo, I think Collingwood after that. Winnable games before we get into a run that looks a little bit tougher on paper. So I know we've got to make the changes quickly, and I know it was only the Gold Coast and all this sort of stuff, but there was there were some signs that I saw in terms of changing up the game plan a little bit, trying to manufacture some speed and little wrinkles that we haven't seen in the past from a tactical point of view, I suppose, without getting into the individuals that did it. You know, what, what did you actually like conceptually from what they brought into round one? Uh, yeah, there was a little bit of that. Um, and I think Simpson said they sort of, when things got tough, the players seemed to go away from that a bit. Yes. Yeah. We did seem to revert back to the 2019, 2020, 2021 kick mark game, you know, kick to a bloke who's 15 metres up the line, he comes back on the mark and he's almost back where you are and you've gone mm. nowhere. Um, yeah, we did that a little bit. Um, the kick-ins from um, from full-back were bloody annoying. It just went out to the um, to the flank on the outer side every time. Um, Can we please ball. change our fucking kick-ins? Yeah. We did once. We tried once we have, to go to Nat Nui. One time. We... We kick it to the right-hand side every fucking time. Yeah. And if there's Everyone a variation, there. yeah. we send it to a guy in the pocket by himself. Pocket, who then kicks it to a contest. Yeah. And every no. time it's to a contest. Pocket, That's where handball, infuriating. To the right. We're missing Jeddah, I think, because he did sort of try and um, pull off the little bit more well, I wish I could predict lotto that. numbers as, as easily as I can predict <laughs> where we're going on a kick out. Yeah, maybe with was... it, maybe with it, and the answer. Who's to say? Yeah, maybe. Well, he might be back. I don't think we're doing changes um, today, but there's five or six guys potentially coming in. Absolutely, um, there and, are. Yeah, and, and he was one of them. Um, yeah, that was uh, kick it forward. Yeah, just kick it. Why'd you kick it think, there? I don't think you're allowed to. Yeah, um, that was that was frustrating. Um, I wasn't at the game. I think you two guys were. Did you see? What did you see of the? Um, of the game plan that changed that um because the, on the, TV, the big it was one was good to pick anything up it was early and i think they did run out of steam which you think willie's first game in however many years you know a couple of guys weren't even on the list two weeks ago this sort of stuff yeah uh, 10 guys no, that were six foot six or above and... yeah jesus i've got some thoughts on it's not a we went in too tall it's just the way that some of the tools played anyway uh nash before i forget kicks it as far as he fucking can every time he gets the footy. And it's so stupid, and I love it. And sometimes it didn't work, and sometimes it did work. And the AFL, I don't think coaches are dumb enough to let it work consistently, but it's very funny. He just gets it and boots it. Anyway, um, <laughs> a lot more overlap running, I thought, Keys, You know, people running through after a mark, trying to run through from behind. And maybe this is what Simo meant about reverting back to tight, because I thought plenty of times we got it on the wing, and somebody was busting their ass. Um, Matt mentioned Nelson earlier. I thought he was one of them that did it well. Jones did it well to come through for the handball. And then a few times, again, it got unstuck a couple of times. But for me, Keys, I saw him on that halfback flank go, fuck this, and kick it into the centre circle or, you know, right into the corridor. We really tried to get aggressive coming in. Uh, and then later on, I think, as you guys have all pointed out, it's probably what Simo was annoyed about. It did sort of fall back into the switching. But there was a more concerted effort to get some play moving from behind, get some link up, and it's a perfect role for a Witherden. Yeah, we it did. It, it sort of, you know, it, it did sort of peter out. Um, one, Knights and Schofield have got to sit down with Gaff and teach him where to run to get the ball because he runs and calls for the ball in stupid spots too often. He, he's... He's the worst culprit for us going wide because he runs out wide to the wing, or he gets a cheapy. He, he, yeah. he runs and gets a um, calls for the ball for a little cheapy kick, and he's on his right foot, and it loses. We fucks all our momentum and everything like that. Yep. There was a passage of play in the third quarter where we got the ball deep in the fence and we pulled the trigger. Uh, I can't remember who got the ball sort of in the centre. But it was a long 40-metre kick to Gaff on the run. Hit him on the chest. Gaff kept running forward and then kicked it and ended up getting he snapped the goal. And I looked and I thought, that's what you've got to show Gaff because that's what we need him to do. You've got to get him. Too often he's running up to the ball carrier to get it rather than running away 
to run so that when the guy hits him, he's got his, his momentum's already going forward and he can just keep going. Um, there was a good one like that as well, Keys, the Willie. I know we'll talk about the bump later, but he's just shit mixed row. And maybe you go, okay, well, maybe there's your man advantage. That what I, That's what opened it up. But the ball spills off. Nash just waits, sort of shows the handball to make the defender run past. And I'm sure he had options. In fact, I know he had options. He could have kicked it wide. But he waited and waited and then just went straight back into the centre circle. And Willie gets on his bike. I think maybe Dixon got a goal. Somebody got a goal out of the yeah, end Dixon of it. Yeah, Dixon got the goal. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. It, op- it opened it right up. And I, and and that's what Gold Coast did to us hmm. a few times. They took a risk. There was a, it was in the... The second quarter was the one that went coast to coast, second if that's what quarter, you're talking about. They kicked, it, they, they kicked in mm. and Dixon almost cut it off. He just he just missed getting his hands on it. Yeah. But the guy marked it, he handballed it to a teammate forward, and then he kicked it 40, 50 metres in the it just it just peeled us open like a like a mm. tin. And it took him all of 15, 20 seconds to go end to end and kick a goal. Because someone pulled the tri- trigger on a risky... I mean, it could have looked stupid because Dixon was probably a couple yeah, of he, fingernails off getting his hand on it. He was. Um, so it nearly came unstuck. But they're the, they're the types of kicks that um, I want to see us do more of. I think there was one... I can't remember what quarter it was. I think Lily, uh, Willie pulled the trigger on a kick that it um, got cut off. Um, on the wing, yeah. But you know, it was it was aggressive kick, and if it had a hit the target, well then we're away. And I and I reckon if if we're making if we're getting the ball turned over like that, um, you don't mind so much. Um, it's far better than one. I think Rothman kicked it to Samo, and it got it was a dinky little fifteen meter nothing kick. It was at his ankles. He couldn't mark it. Ball turned over. They got a goal. Um, yeah, they're the ones that they're the ones that shit you because it was a nothing kick. Even if it came off, it was nothing was going to come of it anyway. Um, so they're the ones that shit fans. Hmm. That, well, that's it. It's these dumb missing short. Do you know what I saw? And I was really pleased with the big footy board. I was very proud of each and every one of you. Good job, guys. Everybody had that same mentality of you know what. If we're going to lose and play like this, this is very watchable. There's some signs. There's an attempt to change things up. And maybe they ran out of steam and went back to form. But the, the match minutes will build up. The fitness in the legs will build up. The players will come back. And if that first quarter, first half, and honestly, even the start of the third quarter, I think they flat out ran out of legs because the Suns were killing us in the last 10 minutes of the second quarter as well. So I think a few more, you know, a few more miles in the legs, as it were, Migs, and, and we might start to see a bit of that. Um Let's talk about Tom Barass's goal. Sorry, boys, it's been 23 minutes. We've been talking about Tom Barass kicking a goal. Best part of What's that, best part? What do you got? Oh, hey. Sorry to cut you off there, Migs. I think our tech problems from uh, pre-game are, are starting to come in, starting to creep in here. We've got some bullshit happening in the chat, but there you go. Uh, how are we doing? What about now? Have another run at it. Um, I, I think the uh, the Tom Barras goal was probably the moment that I um, I really regretted not having gone to the game. Um, yeah, that looked pretty special and sort of saw it coming when he kicked um, or when he, when he got that 50-metre penalty and took him probably just within range but uh really launched into it um yeah that was that was special to do that in his 100th game um and yes it fooled someone in the media to think he, he'd played forward all game uh absolutely didn't he had um had a really good game down back i think um sort of doing a good stopping job he, he saved one between he and her and he saved one goal that then um bounced back and i think ended up at a goal at the other end um, in the... Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. So um, really quick, um, sort of Hearn cut the ball off and then Barras gathered the loose ball, 
really quick hands out to Rotham and, and then we were on our bike. So that was, um, yeah, that was impressive. I thought, yeah, I thought Barras had a good game in his 100th. I would have liked to have seen him play forward a bit more, but he's, he's probably too valuable down back. Um, sorry about that, mix. Just uh, double checking that their audio is going all right. Apologies for that one, but we'll uh, we'll get back to things. Okay, it's great to see Tom Barras kicking a goal uh, and the back line in general. Rotham up and down. I thought Foley was actually really quite prominent. Foley had quite a nice game. Uh, Gov better, not at his best, but but better. So again, it was a game of signs. A few signs for the backman. Yeah, I just I was on the top level. And I could see Brass's smile on the middle in the middle of the ground from there. He was he was beaming. It was great. It was great to see. It was a really good moment. Um, Do you know what? He he noticed the crowd cheering him as well. And when he got back to defensive fifty, having run the whole way, he threw up one of these. He was like, "Yeah, I got you, boys." And it got another big second cheer out of it. So that was yep. good. It was very nice. Yeah, it was good. It was a good good moment. Unfortunately, we couldn't go on. Yeah, the the Fed sort of held up reasonably well. I think they just got over overwhelmed by way the numbers in the finish. Hmm. Um, uh, concern I have with the back line is we touched on it last week is just the lack of speed there. Um, and I think that's we're going to have to try and work through our way through that somehow. Um, I'm not quite sure how. Um, Hearn and McGovern in the same side is starting to worry me. A little, um, and I think that's. I, 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 I'm, I'm beginning to think that McGovern could play that Hearn role and sort of move away from being a true key position defender. I mean, he's not, he's not great defensively one on one anyway. Um, and I think we we might have a bit better look if we're playing Barras and it play Edwards as the true lockdown. Barras is a kind of intercepting, marking type player, and then McGovern sort of shifting into that Hearn type role, um, and then bringing a, a another smaller player in. It's probably not. We've got too many out to do that just yet, but I think as mm. the year goes on, that's something that we're going to have to to look at because I just don't. I, I can the better sides are going to expose us for pace, and and even a side like Fremantle, a lot of they've actually got. A bit of speed on the ball now. They're going to worry our our backs, and that's the. And I, I think it's telling that the got like Rankin got four goals. Um, you, you know those quicker, quicker type forwards are going to. Um, they're going to trouble us. Well, Chol got a goal out of the back. Once it hits the deck, there was a, a few things. You know that was where it started to get a bit chaotic. Um, talking about the backs, talking about the height. I know we can only pick who we've got at the moment. That's sort of where we're at. I've got no issue. I'm not doing the whole we came in too tall thing. We came in with the exact amount of AFL players that we had available to us. That said, going in that tall, I thought Williams was really ineffective. Dixon, I'm setting a low bar for him. I thought he was okay, but not, you know, obviously to the standard that we're going to need if we want to do stuff this year. Garve a little bit better, but not great. Hearn was really poor. Um, Nick Nat, you got to count him as a tall, of course. Really well held by Wits in the ruck. Didn't do much around the ground. So, Migs, I know the too tall thing is a bit of a, a bugbear of yours when people you know bring that up as an argument. But they went in with the players they had. That's fine. With yeah. that said, I don't think the talls made it count. No, definitely. Um, and probably more of them were uh, were uh, in our bottom sort of six or eight players than uh, mm. Kennedy as well. You didn't mention him, yeah. but he, no, he was he's quite... had probably three weeks in a row where he just cannot mark anything. Um, he's had some good players on him. You know, Sam Collins has done some good jobs on him in the past, but, yeah, we really needed, I think, to um, be a bit more creative going inside 50. We look, probably looked at him way too often, and you mentioned Nash, and I think there was, um, there was one in the probably the fourth quarter. No, it would have been the third quarter because we're going to have right a screen. But um, Nash had someone, if he just lowered his eyes, had someone sort of um, closer. It was an easy pass, but he went over the, over that contest to Kennedy, who had Collins on him, and um, that ball got spoiled out of bounds. And yeah, we just looked at, looked at him too often, I think. And he's um, it's because Nash can only kick it long. I'm telling well, you. Yeah. What? When you said that, I thought maybe it was that. 
but I'm telling you, watch for it. It yeah. was the funniest thing I saw all day. Um, yeah, kicking to Kennedy. So yeah, all of those tools. I mean, I don't think you want to do changes today, but the six guys coming in, most of them are smalls, and mm. we should really uh, restructure a bit better against North. Um, you know, going in with um, uh, Edwards, Barras, Gov, Rotham, Hearn um, in the back line is unsustainable because it's too tall and, and too slow. And, and Williams, Dixon, like, Waterman, yeah. Kennedy up front as well, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you, you, then you see things like, you know, Rotham having to play on Rankin and, and Rankin kicking four or five goals yeah. or whatever we ended up on. So, yeah, that is uh, that's definitely going to be a problem and uh, hopefully it's one that we can address pretty quickly next week. All right, Keys, clear the runway. We've hit the 30-minute mark. We'll go slightly <laughs> over because this is worth touching on. Willy Rioli, for a start, he was great. Fantastic to see him back. Kicked a goal, got a big cheer, did some nice things, did some aggressive kicking, led the team in tackles for what that's worth as well. All of that great stuff. It's going to be fantastic seeing him out there against the Roos in round two, Keys, except he's been offered a one-week ban for trying to take a chess mark in the vein of Nick Rewalt circa 20, 2007, whenever the fuck that was. I don't know when that was. Who cares? Anyway, fire away, Keys. What do we think of the Willy Rioli one-match ban offer? I tell you what, it's a real high bar, but I don't think there's a more incompetent dickhead in AFL house than Michael Christian. I mean, there's that many nimrods in there that's not funny, and he's at the top of the pile. I mean, that's a fair fucking effort. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you get a, a week out of that. I mean, in that situation, I don't know. It was a genuine, realistic marking attempt that Rao beat him there by a there fraction of a second. And I mean, if Rao had actually got his hands and got it enough for a mark that would have been a free kick but Rioli got he contacted Rao about the same time the ball arrived um, I thought, to be fair I thought Rao got a fair piece of it like watching it live I thought Rioli got more of it than he has on the replay but it was yeah, still but, simultaneous yeah it's there's many seconds of gap you're allowed to jump for a mark particularly yeah. Particularly when you're you going have, towards you the ball, you don't have to all be coming from the same direction. No, and, I, and I'm I'm thinking, well, okay, what in that situation? What are, what are his alternatives? He could he could keep running straight and not jump, in which case they clash head chest to chest, and are probably going to have a head clash. So, you know, that doesn't solve anything. Possibly. Dan Venables is doing a lap in the car pre-game, by the way. Um, so he he could have he could have pulled he could have pulled it, like stopped and pulled out possibly, but he was going that fast. That's pretty hard to do. If he stops and pulls out of that marking contest, he's got everyone in AFL on yep. on his back saying he washed out. Weak. Yep. 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 They'd be saying he worked out. He pulled out of a contest. So. He has, in that situation, he has contested the ball. He jumped. Um, and for every fucking dickhead in the media that keeps repeating that he got Real in the head, yeah. have a look at the stills. He got him in the chest. Now, right okay, Real doesn't possess an actual neck. But still, he got him in the chest, not in the head. So it's not high contact. And if it was high contact and he truly did get him in the head and they're saying that the AFL need to be asking Gold Coast why they didn't do a concussion protocol on him. By the because way, if he if got he, him in the head... Oh, you go, Casey. If he got him in the head, he's, he's doing concussion protocol. He didn't. He got him in the head. Raul, when, when Because it happened fairly close to where I was sitting... When Rao was lying on the ground, he looked like he was holding his shoulder, and I was actually thinking, oh, shit, I hope the poor kid hasn't done his shoulder again. That was my concern. I certainly wasn't concerned that Rioli knocked him out. So there's no hard contact. It was a realistic attempt. So fuck your week. I hope we get David Grace to earn his number one ticket holder and gets Rioli off because...
Fuck off, Wade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because so done, done. The charges. Nice can I join in before we close? The Rams charges. Wade, well, let's do it. Careless conduct, high contact, yep. um, medium impact. Uh, yep. Can't be careless. If, if it's a genuine attempt to contest the mark, it can't be careless con- conduct. If he's hit him below the neck, it can't be high contact. If Rowell's got up, shaken it off and played on, how the fuck is it medium impact? So that It was a big hit. It was a big hit. Oh, I'm actually not... Big, I've big, seen a few people go about medium contact. I'm not worried about the medium or impact. Medium impact. Medium impact a, to me suggests the blokes at least had to have gone off and get checked out by the trainers. Not um, get up the, me, the medium impact is stems from the the high contact because they, 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 oh. they changed the rules... And they said at the start of this season, if if you con if you make high contact, it's right. automatically medium impact. There's no gotcha. there's no lim- low impact on a on a head high hit. So right. um, even dog agrees with me. Um, how much are they? So that's how where much the are they going to start clamping down on this stuff in in marking contests? Then, like when the bloke well, this is the know, thing. Goes, when a bloke puts his knee in the back of his <laughs> opponent's head to get a launch and take a mark, is that going to be ruled out? Every mark of the week, every mark of the week was a knee in the back of the head this week. Yeah. Every single one, which is fine because it's do... what makes the game great. But if yeah. you stick the mark, you're a hero. And if you don't stick the mark, you're sacked. You're suspended. Like yeah. it's, it's bizarre. No one remonstrated. You're telling me somebody does that to one of our boys, and not one of them goes up and remonstrates. You know, yeah. and, and even I don't think the commentators even said, "Oh, why isn't that a free kick?" I think there was a bit of chat about that at halftime on Twitter from what I could see. But, yeah, I, I'm not saying Gold Coast chuck a block full of pricks. I'm not saying the Eagles are either. But somebody on one team would have taken issue with that and gone up because Rioli was involved in the chain that led to a goal. If that had to happen where somebody knocks our bloke out and then runs on and kicks a goal of his uh, himself or sets it up, somebody would go up to him. You know, Nash was chipping blokes out there the other day when or yesterday when we just kicked a goal for the fun of it. Yeah. Uh, what's the little Rankin? Rankin had a goal at Hearn when they kicked a goal, just a normal goal. Like, there's guys that are remonstrating over nothing. You're telling me nobody's going to stop and anyway, whatever. Yeah, I hit think, him in the I chest. Think David Grace has got David Grace has had much harder cases than this one to answer to, uh, to argue. Well, the thing is, I don't think he gets off. I don't think once they've labeled this, he'll get off. I also think if this had happened 10 weeks from now, it wouldn't have been it would have been fine or thrown out or whatever, whatever. But Early in the season, there's new rules. They crack down. They tighten things up. And then by week five, footy's footy, and it's all just yeah. fair bump play on. So, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I don't think he's going to get off now. Draper punches a guy in the guts and gets a fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's always been because out of that, gra- that was great that it's careless rather than intentional. And he had no, no intention of doing anything other than punch Punching him in the guts. Him. Yeah. I... I have no issue in theory. Again, this is always the thing with the match review panel. If this is consistent, I don't like it today, but fine. You're doing it. And Dan Venables, as I said, he's in a car pre-game because he's been concussed and had his life ruined. So you're being serious about bumping and head high or high impact hits or whatever the fuck, fine. But you're not because I know this is going to happen next week or five weeks from now and it's going to be play on. It's always been outcome-based. Rao wasn't hurt, so why is it a suspension? It shouldn't be outcome-based, to be clear, but I know that the next case will be. Or keys, like you said. Bloke was fine. He got punched, but he played on. No issue. Anyway, Willie Rioli might be an out. We've got some exciting ins, though, gents. And, look, all, all things considered, we've uh, we've sort of had a positive round one. I know we haven't had a win, and I know I think we're in the bottom four, actually, all things considered. But not the game that I think many of us um... were expecting. That goal, that goal by Rankin after the siren put us in the bottom four, by the way. Well, he played on, so it shouldn't have been allowed. Also, he was over yeah. the goal line for his first one, so that shouldn't have been allowed either. We were this close to winning, boys, I'm telling you. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not bitter. We, we did win, according to afl.com.au. Oh, well, good on the boys. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, on the 16-11. Yeah. Nicely done, West Coast. Uh, no, all in all, guys, I think not the worst round one, given where we were at headspace-wise coming in and pre-season. Looked like the sky was falling, but we might have Shuey, Ryan, Kelly, Darling with it, and there's some guys that are, you know, coming back this week or shortly. It might be all right. So, I don't know. With that said, I think we better wrap things up there, but uh, we'll join you all as well later on in the week to talk about North Melbourne. Keys, I will uh, I will leave you to do heroes and villains later on, but I'm sure you'll have plenty for us then. So thank you for joining us today. Yeah. If we're just finally, if we're looking for omens, 
I felt exactly the same way after our 2018 game against Sydney in round one, where we um, we lost, but we looked okay, and you went, okay, we didn't get belted like I thought we were perhaps going to do. The result blew out at the end of the game, um, and it sort of made it, the margin made it look a lot further apart than what we really was. Um, so, Swans yeah, so I'm going back coast. to 2018. But, 2018 all over again. There you go. Yep. Yeah, yeah, flags in the bag. Well, that flag's coming off the wall, so it's time to wrap things up. Migs, thank you very much for joining us. We'll talk to you later on in the week. <laughs> Matt, one of the one of the 15 Matts has just uh, commented on your flag as well. There. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Falling down <laughs> mid-pod. It's fine. It's fine. It looks more like the actual AFL flag, a nice triangle flag to cap things off for us. It's round one. There's plenty of footy to be played. There's plenty of uh, green shoots to look forward to as well. We will talk to you later on in the week. Thank you for joining us. All the socials, all the good stuff, like, share, all of that great stuff. And we will see you on Thursday, maybe Friday. But either way, we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers.